Emitter bias is used when we have a split supply, positive VCC and a minus VEE. In this case, the base is simply taken to ground through some resistor RB. So again, we're going to analyze this circuit by looking at the base emitter loop. There it is. And we're going to write Kirchhoff's voltage law around that loop. Starting off from the ground, we see that the voltage drop across the base resistor is simply IB times RB. Then we have the drop across the base emitter junction, voltage BE. And then we have the drop across the emitter resistor, so it's plus IE, RE. And then we have minus VEE, and that goes to ground. And so all of that adds up to zero. Now at uh, this point, we'd like to just simply move this VEE over to the right-hand side. And we'll notice uh, a little peculiarity that we're going to have to be a little bit careful about. So we have IB, RB, plus V, B, E, plus I, E, R, E, is equal to V, E, E. Now at this point, it is possible for us to uh, make a calculation errors. For example, if the minus VE supply is minus 10 volts, it would be very easy for us to drop minus 10 into here, have this side of the equation negative, but then have this side of the equation being positive. And then it result, of course, um, it's not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that whatever we drop into here remains positive to keep this equation balanced. That's to say, since this side is positive, this side must be positive. And the simplest way to do that is to put absolute value bars around VEE. That way, if we make a mistake by dropping minus 10 in there, uh, it'll come out to be positive. Just as if we drop minus 10 into here, we'd have minus minus 10. So to prevent ourselves from making calculation error, we'll just simply put absolute value bars around this. All right, so now let's also pull over the voltage base emitter to the right-hand side. So we have IB, RB, plus IE, RE is equal to the absolute value of VEE e, minus VBE. E. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to write this expression in terms of base currents. So recall, I'm going ask you to recall that IE is equal to beta plus 1 times I. B. Now, this should be familiar to us because IB times beta is IC. So we have IC plus IB, 1 times IB, that's equal to the emitter current. The emitter current is the sum of the collector and base currents. So now we're going to make this substitution into this expression. So we end up with IB RB plus beta plus 1 IB RE is equal to the absolute value of VEE -E minus VEE. -E. Now notice that we have an RB on this, IB on this side and this term and an IB on this term, and we can pull them both out. So we'll just do that. IB times RB plus beta plus 1 times RE is equal to the absolute value of VEE -E minus VBE. -E. And of course we can divide now this through on both sides and we solve just for IB. So IB is equal to the absolute value of VEE -E minus VBE -E divided by RB plus beta plus 1 RE. There is the base current for this biasing circuit. From here, we can easily conclude what IC is. IC is simply equal to beta IB. So multiply this by, by beta, and we've got IE. 
We can also determine what the voltage drop is across every component. For example, the voltage drop across RC will simply be IC times RC, and the voltage drop across RE will be IE times uh, RE. Since uh, the collector and emitter currents are very close, we can say that the voltage from collector to emitter of the transistor is equal to the sum of these voltages. So we're going to say it's going to be VCC minus the absolute value of VEE. No, I did it wrong right there. Stop. Pause. Oops, this should be plus because uh, this is going to be uh, a large drop across here. And so we're going to minus the collector current times the collector resistance plus the emitter resistance. And that will give us a drop across here. There'll be a slight error in here because this, of course, should be uh, IE times RE. But the IE and IC are approximately close enough. So the other thing we should notice about this circuit is that the voltage at the base over here is going to be very close to zero. In fact, it would be zero if there's no base current, but then the circuit wouldn't actually work. But this is approximately zero volts here, which means that this voltage over here is approximately 0 0.7 volts. But a good rule of thumb is to assume that there is some base current flowing, which makes the circuit work. And therefore, we could assume that this voltage right here at the emitter, voltage at the emitter, is approximately equal to minus 1 volts. So that's a, a good thing to keep in mind. If that voltage is uh, close to minus 1 volt, the circuit is likely working. If it's not, then the circuit is likely not working properly. Now, there are some uh, ways we could simplify these equations. For example, we can simplify this expression here for IB, uh, as many textbooks do. So we'll just simply rewrite this by making some assumptions. And one is that RB, the base resistance, is generally much, much less than beta plus 1 times RE. And so as a result, we can ignore R. B. We also note that beta is generally greater, much greater than 1, and so therefore we can ignore the 1. And so this equation now can be simplified as IB is approximately equal to the magnitude of VEE -E minus VBE -E divided by beta RE. And then, of course, IC is simply beta times these values. So IC is now beta times this, and of course the betas will cancel, and we're left with VEE -E minus VBE -E divided by RE. So this is a very simple approximation to keep in mind, because this calculation can generally be done in the head and you can very quickly see whether you're getting the right current values or the voltage values are correct without the use of a calculator.